She's the co-chair for the Trump campaign in Florida, and Sarah Huckabee Sanders, who's a senior advisor to the Trump campaign. Thank you all for being here tonight. Um, Thanks, Megan. Katie, let me start with you on why you thought this was necessary. Well, Megan, I think that we need to emphasize exactly what Mark Levin just said and that this is about how the Trump campaign uh, responded to a reporter after the fact. We saw uh, libel, defamation, slander, smearing of her reputation simply for trying to do her job. We saw Corey Lewandowski call her delusional. We had Donald Trump, the candidate himself, go into the spin room. I was there. I asked him a question about this after the Miami debate to say that she made it up. This isn't just about simply one reporter. It's a bigger issue of the role of the press in America. And let's not forget that the White House Correspondents Association released a statement after this incident occurred saying there should be no violence or intimidation of any reporter covering the 2016 campaign. The National Press Club president said essentially the same thing. And yet here we are today with Corey Lewandowski and Donald Trump himself continuing to smear the character of a reporter for simply exercising her First Amendment rights in doing her job. Sarah, let me get your response to that, in, in particular the, the White House Association, uh, Press Association, suggesting no, no reporter should be intimidated from doing her job in 2016, including Michelle Fields. And, and I don't think anybody on the uh, Trump campaign disagrees with that statement. I think the real disagreement comes from the fact that uh, I've watched the video many times. I encourage everybody else to watch the video. And if you do, I think you'll see uh, that by doing that, nothing took place here that is out of the ordinary in any day on a presidential campaign. All right, let me just I stop you there. Let, let, let me people. just stop you there. Let me just stop you there. Because it is unusual to have the campaign manager for a presidential frontrunner cause bruises to you, which is what she says I, happened and and the thing is the thing is Sarah so even if you say okay he didn't grab her that hard or I don't believe that he caused the bruises what happened in this case is that the Trump campaign and the campaign manager denied it and said she was delusional that she was a liar that she was attention seeking that she made the whole thing up pointed to prior uh, reporting of hers and called it into question now we see the video that shows he did grab her indeed his lawyer just admitted on camera he grabbed her he touched her so Th that's where the intimidation comes in. First they tried to say she was a liar, then when it was on camera, now they try to say, nothing, it wasn't that bad. I, d I don't think it's an intimidation factor here. I think, again, if you watch that video, you'll see there's no malice, there's no direct intent here. Yes, I think he touched her, but I don't think it was in a way of intimidating her. But what happened, many many what happened after the fact, Sarah? What happened after the fact that I just outlined for you? Now, Megan, I've been in the spin room many times, hundreds of times, uh, and press scrums, and there's always back and forth. I, I've been hit in the face. Yeah, but you're with not a getting to my point. You're not getting to my point. And I've which never is followed. The, the intimidation comes after the fact. You see, when they try to gaslight her and make her think she's well, crazy and, and make us think ways. she's crazy. Well, I think that goes both ways. I think she came out and alleged that something took place that never took place and, and made it sound like she was brutally attacked. And that, that was something that's just simply not true. Okay. And I think you have to look at both sides of the story on that, uh, that she was trying to pressure and intimidate uh, not just Corey, but Donald Trump and his campaign. Dana Lash, your, your I, thoughts I on that. I think it's very unfair to... Your thoughts on that and the, and the fact that the Trump campaign is now saying, really, she overstated what happened by saying that sh they tried to pull her down now she did state mm -hmm. that 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 she retained her she remained you know balanced and that she right. did not fall down but they're suggesting she overstated what happened yeah i think the whole thing's been well I, I mean to answer your that's question Dana megan Lash. go ahead well, to Sorry. answer your question megan i think the only people who've ever said that she was brutally attacked in any sort of way or used that phrase have been have been people trying to excuse lewandowski's actions she did say that her arm was yanked to the ground but she did regain her balance and you can see what happened on the video first off megan there are two things that people are forgetting here the first off as reported earlier by the daily beast Corey lewandowski admitted this first it was i never saw her there's some question was, about I, that. I, I thought that, she was that, a mainstream you shouldn't media hang your reporter. hand on, hat on that there's a there's a real question about whether he admitted it to the breitbart editor or not it's really well, that's, more that's about what we saw Boyle in the video to clarify. But even then, and that brings me to my other point, Megan, the police found probable cause to arrest him. Now, I trust the police, and not just on matters when it's convenient But Dana, for me. what about the fact that he hasn't been tried, right? He, he deserves his day in court. He has the presumption of innocence. He absolutely does. Oh, I'm not saying that, but Megan, I don't need a judge to tell me that what I saw in that video was a load of BS. I'll be frank with you. And if somebody had put their hands on me that way, it would have been a very different outcome. <laughs> uh, because there is asking, there's asking a question. I saw that whole exchange. 
They were surrounded by Secret Service. Secret Service is there to protect the candidate, in this case, Donald Trump. You can't tell me that they did not already assess the people in the room and assess her as not being a threat. Mm -hmm. In fact, Lewandowski had well, to get ahead of the never Secret came Service out and agent said, to touch I, her. I did it in, in defense of Donald afterward. Trump because she posed a threat. He said it never happened. The, Susie, the campaign said it never happened. Donald Trump said right. she made it up. And what we now we see the tape and no one comes out and says, you know what? This is a this is a this was a misunderstanding. He he didn't realize that that this was a reporter. He he saw somebody reaching for the for the uh, presidential candidate. He tried to stop it. He is sorry that she got hurt. He didn't mean like why 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 did it have to get to this point, Susie? Well, I don't I, I can't I wasn't there. I didn't see it. But I'll tell you this. I've been involved in this business for a very long time. And this is actually fairly common, which doesn't mean it's OK. And it doesn't mean the press shouldn't be allowed to do their jobs. They should. But it, unfortunately, now it's been dumped in a court of law. And I think we have to let that process. The judicial process is the envy of the of the world work um, and, and sort of see where we get. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about I, the Megan, fact I have to, uh, yeah, go can ahead, I jump in for a minute? Because uh, what, yes, I've been in a press scrum too, and I've been elbowed, and I've even told other reporters, watch your elbow, or you're going to get one back. I mean, we, know, we all know <laughs> this business, right? You don't have a press right? scrum with Dana. Right. Mm -hmm. But, <laughs> but here's the right. thing. <laughs> She's right. Megan, this is, this is what's different. This is what's different. I have never seen an, a, an instance where a campaign manager then goes on a two-day rant about the reporter and is which yeah. slandering yeah. Intimidating. her, which is, which her. Let, Let's be right. honest, Sarah. Right. That, that yeah. is meant to send a message to her that th not they, ordinary. that they're going to come after her and to other mm -hmm. reporters and and let it let it be stated for the record that this man Corey Lewandowski is the very same man who called up the Fox News DC bureau chief and threatened yours truly prior to mm -hmm. a presidential debate about what would happen if yours truly showed up and asked tough questions of Donald Trump and Fox News has gone on the record about that Sarah so I ask you whether it is time for Mr. Trump to do something about Mr. Lewandowski Look, again, I go back to this individual situation. I, th I don't know if it was Dana or Katie who made the point that they've been in this situation many times. And I think that we're putting a really, uh, we're going down a really bad road here and we're setting a terrible precedent that moving forward, anybody that gets elbowed in the midst or, or touched in the midst of a press scrum can now file battery charges. Sarah, I think this is a no. terrible standard to set. I think it's a bad precedent and I think it's a bad road to go down. Well, go ahead, Katie. Like the, 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 the bad Okay, go the, ahead, Katie. The bad precedent, the bad precedent to set is the, the the person who wants to be the president of the United States and his campaign manager are gaslighting, intimidating, smearing, slandering, and libeling reporters because they didn't like a question or because they were caught on video doing something that they said they never did. And that is the wrong precedent to set in the United States of America. Last question before I let you go. I, this one's for you, Katie. Uh, Earlier tonight, Greta Van Susteren suggested that you are all going to have a tough time. You've shot yourself in the foot. How can you continue to cover the presidential race now um, before, without waiting for the jury verdict? She says it may be a hard sell for you to say you're fair. Your thoughts well, on that? With all, due, with all due respect to Greta, who is a reporter and a journalist and has been for a long time, this is about the principle of journalism and making sure that reporters, again, can do their job without intimidation, that they can cover the presidential election without fear of, of being intimidated or harassed by Donald Trump, his supporters, and his campaign manager on Twitter and being called delusional and a liar as a result of reporting something that they felt was a violation of their space and privacy. Mm. Ladies, thank you all. Thank you, Megan. Thank, thank you. you, Megan. Also tonight, the woman at the heart of the sex scandal involving General David Petraeus will join us live. Plus, as Hillary Clinton turns her sights on Donald Trump with a new ad, we'll ask Kevin Jackson and Lisa Durden about her line of attack and whether it will work. Next.